energy stored in a charged capacitor. Now, previously we talked about how we charge a capacitor. And in our explanation for charging a capacitor, we said that when we put a capacitor like this in series with a resistor and we connect an ammeter and we connect this to a source of EMF, uh, we said that this negative terminal is going to repel electrons and so there will be flow of electrons that are going to be repelled and they'll accumulate on this plate. Likewise, we also said that this positive terminal is going to attract electrons from this plate and so electrons will be attracted towards the positive terminal leaving an excess of positive charges here. Now what exactly happens here is that when these electrons are being repelled towards this plate they do work against the repulsive forces of the electrons that are already there. Likewise when this positive terminal is attracting electrons from this plate, from the positive plate, so that they come this way, it is going to, the, the electrons that are being attracted from here are working against the, re, the attractive forces of the positive charges that are already here. Now that work that is being done by these positive charges against uh, against the electrons that are being attracted by this positive terminal and also the work that is being done against the repulsive forces of the existing electrons here due to these electrons that are coming in that work that is being done is what is actually being stored in the field and that work is stored in form of electrical potential energy so now let us consider a capacitor like this one here this capacitor has got a capacitance C. It has got a capacitance C and it has also got charge on its plates. Let's call the charge Q. Now, let's assume that this capacitor has been partially charged. Now, if, if so it has been partially charged to a charge, let's say Q. Now let's assume also now that this charge that is partially has increased slightly by a small charge which we shall call dq. Now if this capacitor was initially charged to partially by q and now it has been charged, its charge has been increased by a small charge called dq. Now this, in, this small increment in the charge is going to increase, involve movement of charge from one plate to another. So if this change, this small increment in the charge is so small, then we shall assume that uh, the potential difference across the capacitor has not been affected as a result. So that brings us to this, that if that small increment in charge is so small, then the potential difference can be considered to be unchanged or constant and by this process in which case work done will be given by v times that ch the small change in work that is happening will be equal to the potential difference which we are assuming that is unchanged multiply that by the change in q now wh where is work done w is equal to vq where is that coming from I we said that potential difference is the work done per unit charge. Potential is the work done per unit charge. So when we make uh, W the work, the subject of the formula, that is how we end up with uh, this expression that the work done, the small work is equal to potential difference times uh, the small increment or the charge, the small increment in the charge. So now but for capacitors, we know that uh, potential difference V between the plates is going to be equivalent to Q over C. So it means we are going to substitute for the value of V in this expression. When we substitute this expression in V here, we end up with work done is going to be equal to Q over C. So now, if the total work done for that increment, it is... Uh, so it means we are going to... Now, if we, we are... We are if we are talking about a small increment in the charge, now what if this increment in charge, let's say the capacitor was previously 
having no charge so meaning it's having zero charges and then it was full it was it was charged to full capacity maybe it was charged to value q so for us to be able to find the work done in charging that capacitor from zero up to q which is when it is at full capacity it means we are going to integrate this expression here with respect to q and our limits will be that we are charging this capacitor from zero up to q and then we will be able to find the work done in charging a capacitor fully and in, in integrating both sides of this expression we shall be able to find the expression for work done so work done w in increasing charge from zero to q will be this So the work done is going to be V times dQ and in the place of V we substituted Q over C because V is equal to Q over C for capacitors times the change in Q. So meaning we are going to integrate this expression with respect to Q with our limits being we are charging the thing from 0 up to Q up to charge Q when it is fully charged and the work done is from 0 up to W work done. So integrating will give us work done being equal to 1 over C since we are integrating with respect to Q, it means it's going to be 1 and C are constant, so we bring them out of the integral sign and we only integrate this. So it's going to become, integrating this, we are, it is to the power 1. So for us to integrate, it's going to be, we are going to add 1 to the numerator and the answer we get here, we divide by the whole term. And uh, we'll end up with our work done for uh, being Q squared over 2C. That will be our first expression for work. Now, if we are to substitute the value of Q, remember for capacitors, the charge Q is going to be equal to the capacitance times the potential difference. So Q is equal to CV. So if you are to substitute for CV in this here, so me, so that work becomes CV, C squared, V squared over 2C. We'll end up with another expression for work done, which is W is equal to CV squared over 2. That's our second expression. Then also, if we want to substitute for the value of c you know c is going to be q over v if we to substitute for the value of c here it would mean that we'll come up with another expression for work which is going to be qv over 2 so those three are our three expressions for work the first one the second one and the third one those are our three expressions for work done in a capacitor if you want to watch more of this video, simply subscribe to this channel and for the benefit of your colleagues out there who would like to watch more of these tutorials, simply share this video. Otherwise, thank you for watching and hope to catch you in the next tutorial. For Kisembo Academy, this is Arnold Ranga Kuranya.